few organizers uh, who's been in the conference so far. I think I'll take the opportunity to speak. Now we talk about supersymmetric AES fire solutions and the principle of type 2 uh, So quite a lot of this will have some overlap with what Larry was talking about today and yesterday. Um, in fact, some of this work is on the paper I did in September, and some work has been published with Dario, uh, Neil Pearson, and Sakura Jenny, who are on the AES 3 uh, So I'll give a quick motivation background, but much of it was discussed already, so I can breeze through this. Um, then I'll talk about the previous ADS5 solutions in 2B, and then I'll talk about some generalizations of a previous classification and then some new a new classification of ADS5. So as I talked about yesterday, but this is a generic thing, uh, ADS TFT correspondence, ADS D plus one, uh, TFT uh, D dimensions. Uh, this is based on idea of what we want to do. So it's this internal manifold uh, that really determines what kind of field theory you have. So by understanding what types of geometry and manifolds you can have on this field theory, you should understand what kinds of sorry, what kinds of manifolds you have on this solution, you should understand what types of field theory you can have. Uh, so a way to do this is to impose some supersymmetry, and there's various tools you can use to classify what types of solutions you can have. Um, I should be using uh, what we call G-charge techniques, which were explained in various schools, um, but there's other uh, types which use generalized complex geometry, which I know some people uh, have used. Uh, so, just a quick notation, similar to uh, yesterday. So, the important things are going to be this tau here, which is the complexified uh, scale of the two complexified uh, complexification of the two scales. In, uh, uh, this three form, which is convex here, and this self confined form. So we impose that the fermions are zero, so we have just bosonic solutions, and we get these supersymmetric equations. And these are the d plus 10 ones that Dario wrote yesterday. So, as I said, we're going to uh, specialize the ADS5. So, a previous classification of ADS5 solutions in type B was carried out by Dario and collaborators uh, in 2005. So the first part, I'll discuss a subcase of this classification, where we're going to take what were the Sasaki Einstein solutions, and we're going to generalize them into a next theoretic um, framework by adding this tau variation. Um, and the second part is we're going to discuss briefly these solutions by McPherson and friends, uh, which made the classification at Stereo. Uh, and friends did in 2005. Uh, we're going to actually extend the first classification to cover this case as well. So the way they avoided this classification was having uh, a vanishing five-point flux, which was implicitly set to be non-vanishing in the 2005. Sorry, I'm just not moving. Um, in the 2005 classification. Um, <laughs> okay. So quick recap of the Sasaki Einstein solutions. The important thing here is you have this U1 here, then you have this Kahler Einstein manifold. Notice the emphasis on Einstein. Um, so these were uh, realized as D3 frames here uh, with the Flaviato and George Sack and Einstein. So we're going to ask what happens when we turn on this uh, tau, uh, con uh, tau con uh, scalar. It's a metric, so I should just copy and paste it from the previous page, but it's exactly the same. The difference here is now rather than B4 being Kahler Einstein, it's just Kahler. However, we had this nice interpretation of being arising from uh, Clavier. Instead, rather than having just this cone, which would have been in the Sasaki Einstein case, you tag on this F theoretic torus, and then this whole space here is now Clavier. This is quite a gen quite nice generalization of what we had with the Sasaki Einstein. And this would be sort of like an X theory interpretation. This would be corresponds to four D theories with varying uh, fundamentals. Uh, so, a quick sort of idea of what it is you've still got your B2 frames, you've still got this uh, cone, uh, and then you have these toruses which are fiber through this internal uh, manifold here, which is A. Okay, so now that's part two. So, we're going to instead. Um, the fact solutions where the five-form flux is vanishing. 
So we still keep the general frequency one as general as possible, consistent with the symmetries of ADS. Uh, and one can perform the same uh, sort of uh, computations that Derek did just say to see the, the torsion conditions for this minus time. And after plugging this all this in, one gets a metric of this form. So any solution with ADS5 with vanishing button plots has this metric. It may not be obvious at first, but you can also put into this so here you have this uh, killing vector. So something unusual in case in, with the ADS5 one was here you should have a deep side plus rotor. So here there's a no vibration. So what you have in this metric is a convex one form here and not a, uh, not a real one form. And your whole space is determined by three first order differential equations and two algebraic ones. And this determines your whole manifold and the whole solution. And by satisfying these equations, you can show that all solutions, uh, all, all solutions this satisfy also the Einstein equations and your flux equation equation. So it would be nice to find new solutions to this. So the solutions I've said in the 2014 ones, they have the problem of being non-compact, so they're reached by all the non-BNT directives, and this is Saki Einstein manifold. So an idea of generalizing this is if you begin with a toric, that's exactly how it's the manifold. So in practice, this means that it has, a whole, it has three U ones uh, in this case. One of these is the R symmetry, but the other two are not R symmetry, and you can T dualize along these. If you perform two T dualizes along these, you end up with a solution with no uh, five point plant. And this you can show if it's into the classification. This has a nice interpretation with you have no F, so you have no D3. So you think of these as being um, arising from intersections of five frames and seven frames. Um, and one can check even though, however, there's a problem in that these solutions are now singular. However, you think that it's due to these five frames that there are these singularities. And you can check the central charges, and these agree with. Uh, the previous central charges from so second. So um, uh, just as a quick summary, uh, you can we looked at ADS5 solutions, we found the general classification, and now all ADS5 types have been put in either this classification or the previous 2005. Um, yeah, I'll be done. Thank you, Chris, for